you know, how this whole team worked from having your friends, being involved, people that you grew up with that you really trust. That's just like the ultimate, just the group that you want in this business. But I learned going there that it's easier uh, said than done. A lot of the guys that come in, in our league, they want that so easily and they disappoint these guys that they know, but they don't know the backstory behind what goes on. And once I figured that out, once I was able to get that knowledge from them, like I want that type of relationship. Whatever we do business-wise, we'll figure that out. But just the relationship of having somebody that you can trust, that believes in what you believe in and want to see you succeed. I seen that in Mav and Bron early and at, when I was, what, 22, 23 years old. And now to kind of have a person like that is just, you know, just to see that blueprint was cool. I remember seeing my jersey being sold in college and being like, hold it up for a minute. Why don't I get a percentage of that? Like, when did you recognize that basketball was a business? Yeah, I would say around that time, I walked into the co-op uh, at Texas and uh, I was going to get a t-shirt and I seen a 35 jersey on the rack. And I'm just wondering, like, uh, why my name's not on the back of it. But everybody knows this is my jersey. And it was just kind of confusing at that point because it's like that in-between period of, is it always just about ball or they might be making some money on the other side of this too. So it was like, I didn't know who to turn to. I had no guidance and I was going to the NBA the next year. So mm -hmm. it was just like, I just want to play ball. Ron, your stuff started, I mean. No, nah, yeah, mine went to high school. From my freshman year to my sophomore year, they moved our home games to the university. So, <laughs> how big was your high school for gym? How big was our high school? 1500. 1500. We opened up my first home game my sophomore year is at the University of Akron U, which is like 6,000 people. And they sell season tickets. So, right then and there, as a sophomore, I'm 15, I knew that this is a, this is a, this this is a business. This is, this is definitely a business. And then his senior year, they actually put the games on pay-per-view. Yeah. What? Yeah. You could watch LeBron James <laughs> games anywhere in the state. You paid like 10 bucks. Yeah, how about the blackout game at home? That was hilarious. So, yeah. I told our high school that I'm not playing another game at the university. Unless no, no, we, and you want your senior night. My senior night. I want my senior night I'm at our high school. Not at a college. Not at a college. I'm not playing. I'm yeah. done for the rest of the year unless we play at our high school. You know, because I wanted the fans. I love for our fans to be like right up on. That, that's the great, you know, that's the part of being high school. school. Yeah, part of being yeah, high school. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you don't student, get that again. Yeah, you school. don't get that again. So the student center right up on the floor. I wanted that again. You got the trucks out back. So they, now they got to bring in six trucks and pipe a feed to Broadcast pay per view from a high a, school. Into a high school. Common sense tells you a high school is not, a high school gymnasium is not built not, it was not, to it was broadcast. Not built for that. That's insane to me, though. Three it's, minutes into, into the, first the first quarter. quarter. Power of six out. blocks go up. <laughs> <laughs> wait, wait, wait. Power in the entire gym? The whole six entire, blocks. the whole entire, almost the whole entire city gone. There's eight trucks, yeah. eight broadcast trucks outside of a high school gym. This ain't fucking, yeah. this ain't the Staples Center. Yeah. You know, it's like a